I heard stories growing up that there was some old, the old loggers back in the day, some of them were so tough that they could fall a, uh, a big dug fir tree with a cross-cut saw all by themselves without a partner. I, I never knew if that was true or not. I've even heard stories that some, some of the subscribers said that their grandpas had told them that they rigged up some sort of a contraption with a bungee cord or a piece of rubber or something to hold the other side. And I've always kind of wondered if it would be possible to do that uh, and if it would be efficient at all. What I found was that um, it's less work uh, than, than uh, strictly falling it with an axe, for me anyway, and, and I was getting used to it. There were a couple downsides. A couple of downsides is, is you couldn't cut real fast because there's a lot of vibration that goes through the saw and the kerf, because this is a crescent ground saw, the kerf is so small, that little bit of vibration goes through the saw and starts uh, causing it kind of a wave pattern and it binds up on the kerf. And I think, I've never noticed that before, uh, felling timber with two men, or two people, uh, because I think that the, the person on the other end, it counteracts that vibration. I've never felt that before. So what, what the remedy was is I had to cut real slow, uh, which was fine. It was, I was definitely much less fatigued at the end of it, cutting, chopping in the face cut, and, and cutting in the, the back cut uh, with the cross cut saw. It was a pretty good way to do it. Um, I used an axe there, that, or a small cruiser axe, boy's axe I guess it was, boy's axe in there to kind of help support that at the very beginning but it wasn't really necessary once I, I got into the kerf a little bit so that was uh, interesting the saw how's the saw cut the saw cuts very well it's very well set it is it could use a little bit of a tune-up you saw some of the some of the noodles there when you you can analyze those noodles the the little shavings that come out at the end uh, out of the gullet and that will tell you a great deal about the saw this had some nice noodles on it, and it very well, and, and I could be wrong, but there was a lot of chips as well, and I think that might be, I, I think it's pretty sharp. It's probably 80% of what it should be, uh, and a lot of those small chips are because I just didn't have the ability to have the power to get in there and to pull those out. When I did pull and change the handle configuration to change my leverage on the saw, uh, I did see some of those nice noodles coming out, but a wonderful, wonderful saw. Um, and again, this is a felling saw. This is not, this is a, uh, it's just perfect. It was just perfect saw for what this was made up of, or just what, for what it was made for. So I guess that's it. Well, we'll uh, have uh, part, th part three, or is it part four? We'll have the next part coming up, and we'll see you guys on the next video.